how Senor Ouija board works. You ask the spirits a question, and they'll respond by moving this to yes, no, or it'll spell something out on these letters. And it's at this point I'll be having fun? <laughs> More fun than splashing badly dressed pedestrians in the Turbo Z. Ooh, they should put that on the box. <laughs> All right, let's communicate with the hereafter. We can talk to any historical figure we want, like... Cleopatra's dead, isn't she? That's the rumor. Well, I'd be interested to know what kind of makeup she used. All right, now we're rolling. Earth to Cleo. Hey, Dick, Joanna, could you give me a hand here? I need someone to check this application. Vermont Family Support League. You're applying to be like a big brother? George, that's terrific. Well, it's the least I could do for a kid that needs a buddy. I figure I can take him hiking or fishing to a ball game. Back from a ball game, too. <laughs> <coughs> well, let's, uh, let's take a look. Name, George Utley. Occupation, head of guest relations. <laughs> Stratford Inns of America. You were honored by the Society for Semi-Aquatic Animals? Yeah, you remember last year when they roasted me down at the Beaver Lodge? <laughs> George, my advice would be to be as upfront as possible with your answers. Yeah, George, you're a terrific guy. You don't need to exaggerate. Well, I guess it's worth a shot. I've got a couple of extra applications up in my penthouse suite. <laughs> Well, it is on the top floor of the garage. L. E. Cleopatra used that on her face? Ew, hang up on her. Well, if history's gonna gross us out, let's try the future. <clears throat> okay, tell me this, Weege. Will my true love be forever faithful? No. What? Well, we're obviously experiencing a slight technical difficulty. Let me try rephrasing the question. <laughs> Will my true love ever be unfaithful? Yes. Michael, I don't like this game. It's saying bad things about me. Well, not to worry, Steph. It's not like anyone believes this silly stuff. Good. I'm going to the kitchen to get us some drinks. I'll come with you. Hi, Dick. Lady Dick. I just want to mention, Dick, on Sunday, I've got a photographer coming to take a new picture of you for the station lobby. What's wrong with the old one? It's no longer accurate, unless you're planning on growing a goatee and mouse ears. Somebody drew on it? Hi, Michael. Oh, Steph, I'm, I'm glad you didn't cancel tonight's date. How many times do I have to explain about last night? My curling iron and hot rollers went on the blink at the same time. Now, I couldn't let you see my hair without its natural curl and bounce. I believe every word, but you have to admit it's, it's kind of a coincidence. The iron and rollers are right upstairs if you want to check. Steph, I wouldn't demean our relationship by going upstairs to verify your story. We can check it out right here with our friend the Weege. Michael, if you don't put that board away, you're not going to need it to communicate with dead people. And away it is, and away we go. <laughs> Honey, promise you'll never let a, a board game come between us. Low bridge, look out. Okay, down Periscope. Periscope down, Uncle George, sir. Uh, Dick and Joanna Loudon, this is Mitch Stevens, and I'm Uncle George. Hi, Mitch. Hello. Looks like you two had a great day. We did. They didn't. <laughs> Dick and Joanna own this whole inn. Really? Every wall. And Dick here writes all sorts of books. Wow. You mean like Horton Hears a Who? Um, more like Horton Bills a Barbecue. 
And Dick here is the star of his very own TV show. Wow. Well, I'd hardly say star, George. It's more like a personality. Wow. Now what? Uh, no. Uncle George is going to teach me how to hammer without hitting my fingers. Well, that's, that, that's well. And you know what else? I, I don't think so. Uncle George is coming over, and we're going to build a treehouse. Well, again, I'd, I'd put that in the in the swell category. It's going to be 12 feet high. Great. And you know what else? Mm-mm. You shouldn't talk with your mouth full. Uh, Mitch, we, we should let Dick eat. He loves playing know what. Looks like he's a champ at it. Mitch, maybe you should wait here. I've got a lot of messy fish cleaning to do. Oh, boy. Fish guts. Hey, Dick. Look what I... Oh, oh sorry. You're in the middle of something. No, that, that's all right, George. Uh, do you want to ask me to clip these cents off coupons? And I accidentally said yes. <laughs> so what's, what's up? I just got the pictures back of my fishing trip with Mitch. Oh, great. Hey, here's Mitch holding his first worm. Oh, it's, a, it's a beauty. <laughs> and this is Mitch trying to get the worm on the hook. Uh-huh. This is Mitch looking for the worm on the ground. Uh-huh. And here he is after he found the worm. George, uh, I really ought to get back. I'm, uh, I'm racing the clock on these expiration dates. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just, just looking at all these shots of Mitch <laughs> get carried away. Yeah, there's something about a, a boy and his, and his worm. Uncle George? Uncle George, I love it. In here, Mitch. Oh, Dick. I'm building Mitch a wigwam out back as a surprise. Could you keep him busy for a minute? Sure. Hi, Mitch. Hi, Uncle George. Hi, Dick. Know what? Uh, Mitch, wh why don't you just, just tell me? <laughs> Uncle George said we get to go down to your TV station and see your show. Oh, Mitch, uh, I, I haven't even asked yet. Uh, we just can't put Dick on the spot here. So, Dick, what is it, yes or no? Well, you can come to tomorrow's show if you want to. All right! Uh, Mitch, uh, could you stay in here with Dick for a minute? Uh, I'm getting a big surprise ready for you. Okay, Uncle George. <laughs> Uncle George said your pictures are on the back of your books. Uh... Hey, you're right. All this time I thought it was a mirror <laughs> Dick, are any of the kids in your books named Mitch? Uh, most, most of my characters tend, tend to be hand tools uh, Are any of your tools named Mitch? No <laughs> But, but I, I suppose if I, if I ever named one I could name it... Uh, Mitch the monkey wrench. Wow! <laughs> Dick, do you ever have kids named Mitch on your TV show? No. Never, never, ever. <laughs> but you could. Hey, know what? We could be in a show together. I could be Mitch the monkey wrench, and you could be Dick the drill. And we could, we could fight crime and save people. And fly! Great, great idea. It's just, you know, kind of been done to death. <laughs> okay, Mitch, ready. Okay. Well, bye. Bye. Know what, Dick? What? I wish you were my big brother. I caught you. Can you go over a couple of things with me before the show? 
Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, last night, Steph said she took a bath and went to bed early. Was that the straight poop? <laughs> Michael, I'm only willing to talk about today's show. Fine. Well, <clears throat> while preparing today's show last night, what was Steph doing? <laughs> Michael? All right, Dick, you don't have to answer me. I'll just walk away, and if you don't stop me, I'll know Steph was telling the truth. Well, I feel much better now. You are playing along with me, aren't you, Dick? <laughs> hi, Dick. Oh, hi, Mitch. Where's, where's George? He's still parking the truck. I couldn't wait to see you. Listen, uh, <clears throat> Mitch, let me make one thing clear. Uh, you, you know, you're lucky to have a, a friend like George because he's one, one terrific guy. Wow. This is just like a real Hollywood studio. No, no, it isn't. It's a... Tiny, low-budget, hole-in-the-wall station. Hi, guys. It's just like a real Hollywood studio, huh? Yeah! It's not at all like a Hollywood studio. Three minutes, Mr. Loudon. Thank you. Ah, uh, Dick, the photographer for the new lobby portrait. Say cheese. You want to look over the cue cards, Mr. Loudon? They're, they're, they're fine. Just like being on the set of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> really, it's, it's, never, it's never like this. I mean, this is a quiet, intellectual show. T today's guest is a, a scientist with the Department of Agriculture. Boring, right? Ah, uh, Dick, the agriculture guy canceled a little radioactive milk, and suddenly he doesn't have time for it. <laughs> so, meet today's guest, the amazing Dwayne. <laughs> you booked a magician? Nice to meet you, Mr. Loudon. I say, nice to meet you, Mr. Loudon. Oh, I see what the problem is. You have an egg in your ear. <laughs> Michael. I think we've got our opening, Dick. Try to remember how you reacted. It was cute. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty neat, huh, Mitch? Yeah. You know what, George? Dick said he's going to write a whole book about me. He did? What? Yeah. And you know what else? It's going to be a TV show, too. Mix the monkey wrench and dig the drill. We're going to fight crime and fly. What? George, I, I never said anything about a television show. But it could happen. Right, Uncle Dick? Uncle Dick? George. Fifteen seconds, Mr. Loudon. Clear the stage, please. Well, well, looks like you and Mitch have quite a lot planned together, Uncle Dick. George, can, can, can we talk about this a after the show? Oh, I don't know. You and Mitch might be too busy fighting crime and flying, Uncle Dick. George, Five seconds. You Hollywood types don't care who you step on, do you, Uncle Dick? Why well, hasn't, uh, hasn't George come down yet? I was hoping to talk to him. Not yet, and I don't know why you didn't talk to him after the show yesterday. Honey, the amazing Dwayne had me jammed in a box full of swords. It wasn't like I could make any sudden movements. Is that cinnamon, hot crosses? Yeah, and they should be just about ready to come out of the oven. Michael! <laughs> Steph, have you got a minute for a couple of quick follow-up questions? I keep telling you I was home all night. Stupid, stupid spirits. I wish they just dropped dead. <laughs> Fingers. All right. Listen up, you stiffs. <laughs> Will I be unfaithful to Michael? No. Case closed. I don't get it, Steph. Every time I ask, will my true love ever be unfaithful? <laughs> yes. It doesn't figure. The only way both answers could be right is if you weren't my true... Well, this thing's obviously defective. Freeze! Am I Michael's true love? No. Okay, then who is? <laughs> T. Z. T Z. Steph, I swear, I, I don't even know any any T Z. You're not going to believe some piece of plywood, are you? <laughs> In fact, I think Ouija is Latin for for silly. <laughs> oh. 
Golly. Get these babies out of their misery. <laughs> well, leave a few. <clears throat> I think the smell might lure George out of his room. Good. Then we can talk. I mean, two adults should be able to straighten this out. Mmm. Cinnamon hot crosses. Uh, George, about this business with... <laughs> Gee, I didn't steal anything you cared dearly about, did I, Uncle Dick? Maybe it would be better if you talked to Mitch. Yeah. At least I could count on him not to act childish. And take all my buns! Hi, Uncle Dick. Oh, hi, Miss. I'm glad you could make it. I, uh, I, I want to talk to you about, about Uncle George. I just saw him outside. Why don't you have a seat? Oh, boy! An interview. Just like on your TV show. Here, pretend this is a microphone. Uh, I, I know you think you're, you're real fond of me. I mean, to you, I, I must seem glamorous, uh, exciting, almost godlike. I can't hear you. You're not talking into the mic. Uh, uh, thanks. Um, but I, I, I don't think you, you like me for me. I, I think you like me for, for what I do. My, my being a, a talk show host and, and a writer must, must seem glamorous to you, but, but in reality, it's, it's nothing more than glitz. Glitz? Glitz is like... I can't hear you. <laughs> Glitz is like, like Mr. T's jewelry. Mr. T? M Mr. T wears a, a lot of gold and, and silver, but, but underneath all that glitter, he's, he's just your average. <laughs> oh, this, Mr. T may not be the best example, but. <laughs> you get, you got my point. Yeah, you know, Mr. T. Can he be on the Mitch the Monkey Wrench show? There, there isn't, there isn't going to be any show, and I, I, I don't know Mr. T. I'm just a, a regular guy who, who wanders down to a tiny, dingy TV studio and does a pathetic, <laughs> low-budget show that doesn't even draw as much an audience as Sewing with Susie. <laughs> You still write those adventure books? They're how-to books. No one, no one reads them. They just refer to them and <laughs> spill paint on them and varnish. Nobody cares who even, who even writes them. God! <laughs> Gee, Mickey's hand is on the three. I'd like to stay and talk to you, Dick, but I, uh, I, I really wanted to get in some bike riding. See you around. So how'd it go? Honey? I'm nothing. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi, Mitch. What you doing? Oh, just hanging a boring picture on the stupid wall. Really? Can I watch? Wouldn't you have a better time with Dick? Well, he's a nice guy and everything. But when you get right down to it, he's mostly a glitz. <laughs> oh. George? You were going to show me how to hammer nail without hitting my fingers. Well, you've come to the right place. Up, periscope. Yeah. Now, the trick is, take careful aim, hold the nail steady, keep your eye on the head. You know what, Uncle George? What? I'm glad you're my big brother. Stay 
mistake, Mrs. Zimmer. I must be looking for another TZ. <laughs> it was nice talking with you. And I'm sorry I called you a hussy. <laughs> Steph, I know you're not speaking to me, but can I use the phone? My car just broke down. I'm sorry, Michael. This phone is only for guests of the inn and people who are faithful to me. <laughs> Please, Steph, the Turbo Z is stalled at an intersection. She could get smashed. I don't know how she broke down like that. She's always been so reliable. Like a true and faithful... <laughs> TZ! Turbo Z! <laughs> Not at all. You're neck and neck. <laughs> if it weren't for that turbocharge, there'd be no contest. Ouch! <laughs>